Okay, a binomial distribution, here's the third part in this series. Um, a look at a more, kind of a couple more complicated cases. So uh, we've done heads and tails, which are always 50-50, always which uh, makes the probability kind of, uh, you don't lose track of kind of what's going on with it. So with 20% with chance, though, now we've got, you know, our yes and our no would be yes rain or no rain each day. And uh, so I'm going to, instead of heads and tails, I might use an R and uh, an N for no rain. So rain is R, N is no rain. And we're going to deal with five days, just like flipping a coin five times. But in our, in our, this, you can think of this as a weighted coin. There's only a 20% chance of rain. So we're weighted heavily towards no rain every day. So, um, so what's the probability, it, uh, probability a rain, of a rain of, the word of in there, what's the probability of a, of a rain at least one day? <clears throat> so first thing you, you want to think about is, again, our R and our N, our successes and failures. So the probability, our sex, success in this case is rain. Probability of rain is 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 20% chance. Probability of no rain is 0 0.8, or 80% chance of no rain. Okay, to figure out what the probability um, of at least one day of rain is, you, you would take probability of at least one day of rain. So you could have uh, four days of rain, or five days of rain, or three days of rain, or two days of rain, whatever. But to figure that out, you take one quickly. You take one times the probability of no rain on those five days. And the prob so that would be one minus well, there's only one chance that that could happen, and that's if you had this situation. No rain, no rain, no rain on Monday, no rain on Tuesday, no rain on Wednesday, no rain on Thursday, and no rain on Friday. So five days of no rain, and that is 0.8 five times, so to the fifth power. So 1 minus 0.8 to the fifth power, and I'm kind of leading you towards the... Um, uh, leading you towards the uh, formula for this and kind of wean you off of Pascal's triangle. That would be um, 0.67232, you know, getting all the decimals in there. But you'd be looking at about a 67.2% chance of rain. Okay. Um, so that's that one. You know, the at least one's pretty easy. But what happens if you have this one? What's the probability of exactly two days of rain out of five? So in this case, we've got some things we need to look at. Well, you could have rain, rain, no rain, no rain, no rain. So this would be rain Monday, rain Tuesday, and then no rain the rest of the week. You could also, it doesn't matter where you put the R and the N. I mean, they could go anywhere, any, any day it rains. So maybe it ra doesn't rain on Monday, but it rains on Tuesday. Then doesn't rain, doesn't rain, and then it rains. So you're going to have to figure out how many of these there are, and then find the probability of each. Well, there are five different days, and we're going to choose two for rain. So this would be a five choose two scenario which if you go to Pascal's Triangle or use your calculator, that's 10. So there are 10 ways to arrange this. And what's nice is no matter how we arrange it, the probability for rain is 0.2. So those would be both, both 0.2, and then this would be 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. Well, when we're multiplying these, commutative property works no matter what the order. So all five, all ten of these situations are going to have the exact same probability, which would be 0.2 to the second power, because there's two days of rain, times 0.8 to the third power, because there's three days that are not rain induced. And so you plug that in, 5 choose 2 is 10, 
times 0.2 to the second times 0.8 to the third and you get 0.2048 or you've got about a 20.5% uh, 20 chance of rain um, exactly two days sometime in that week. Okay, so what's the probability of rain at least two days? Well, in this case, we've got a couple situations we got to look at. We could have the two days of rain. We could rain, rain, no rain, no rain, no rain. And we already figured out that there's 10 of those, and the probability is kind of nice. We've already figured out that it's um, 5 choosing 2 times 2 days of rain times 3 days where it doesn't rain. And you just multiply that out, and you get 0.20. I already lost it. 4.8. Okay, but it says at least two days. So you could have three days of rain. Well, that'd be R, 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 N, N. And again, there's lots of ways to arrange that, but we're picking out of five days, we're picking three days of rain. And so that would be 0.2 to the third power times 0.8 to the second power. And then you could have four days of rain, which would be rain, 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 no rain. And again, there's uh, five ways to arrange this one. So that would be five choosing th four. And then that would be 0.2 to the four days of rain and 0.8 to the one day of no rain to the first power. And then the last one is all five days could be rain. Okay, and that would be, and i got to squeeze it in here. I'm out of room, but, and I apologize. That would be five, and we're going to choose five days of rain times 0.2 to the fifth power times 0 0.8 to the 0, but that's 1. And so you calculate all of those probabilities and add them together. Okay, so the screen kind of jumped on you, and I put everything else in so that we could uh, um, have this done quickly. And so we've got uh, the first situation we already figured was 0 0.2048. That's for two days of rain. You do this math, and you get 0 0.0512. This one here is 0 .064, 0 0.064, and this one here is 0 .00032. Add all those together, and you get this here probability, 0 .26272. And that's the probability of at least two days of rain. So two days, three days, and on up. So there's about a 26.3% chance. You know, the weathermen would round that to the whole number. So you got about a 26% chance. It raised us about 6%, 5.5% or so. So there's that one. <laughs> so hopefully that kind of helps you get the picture of, the, uh, of how this formula works. So let's look at a, an example that really kind of takes you out there. and it, it divorces you from the use of Pascal completely. I mean, you could use Pascal's triangle here. There's no doubt. But who wants to go to the 50th row and do all that? Some people like to do that. I would not like to do that. So in our case, um, in our case, uh, find out, uh, try to do this on your own. See if you can figure it out. Uh, and I'm going to give you another problem at the end that you, to see if you can figure out. So here we go. So you're probably, you've got this disease, uh, this device, this medical device that says it will protect humans from the contraction of, of a virus 99% of the time. So in 50 trials, what is the probability of at least one failure? So you've uh, given them this device and you expose them to the virus 50 times and see what happens. <laughs> What's their chances of having at least one failure in those 50 trials? Um, so the probability then, the probability of success, call it S, is 0.99. The probability of failure would be 0 0.01 and together they have to add up to 100 percent so in this case again this is that at least one idea again so it's one minus the probability of all 50 being successful well that would be one minus 0.99 to the 
to the 50th power. Or if you wanted to, you know, think of it in the formula way, it'd be 1 minus 50, choosing all 50 being successful, um, times 0 0.99 to the 50th and 0 0.01 to the 0 power. And so you'd end up with uh, 1, point zero, anything to the 0 power is 1. So when you do this, 50 choose 50 is 1. That's why I left it out right here. But 1 minus 0.99 to the 50th power is uh, 0.395 percent. So, or not percent, but 0.395. Hopefully you get the picture. So we have... Um, a, in 50 trials, if you're exposed 50 times, you've got a 39.5% chance of this device failing on you at least one time. Um, so that, that kind of gives you an idea that, you know, over a, once is okay, but when you go to 50, you know, don't press your luck. <laughs> so what about a different scenario? Let's say we had, we wanted to know the probability of exactly, not, not that this would be something you'd be interested in, but we want the probability of exactly five um, failures. Okay, it's going to be pretty low, but this will help, help, again, kind of cement that idea of uh, the, the formula for binomial distribution. So try it out, and then watch what I do. Okay, so in this case, we have 50 coin flips or 50 exposures we're going to choose five failures and so the probability of that happening is that times um, our five failures which would be 0 0.01 to the fifth power times our 45 successes which is 0.99 to the 45th power and so now it's just a matter of whoa Whoops, that was a previous problem. Sorry about that. <coughs> Excuse me. So that would be, you know, you get your calculator out and multiply it out. So 50, choose 2, or choose 5. Excuse me. 50 choose 5 is like, you know, 221 million, something like that, times 0 0.01 to the fifth power times 0.99 to the 45th power and you get something uh, excessively low but 1.35 times 10 to the negative fourth or 0 0.0001 you know 135 and so you got a very low chance of exactly five failures but there's still a chance very tiny and again, I hope that just helps you kind of cement the idea of the formula. Um, so I hope this helps. Best of luck with binomial distribution. There's more to do, but uh, that would give you a huge leap. And if you understand all three videos, you've got a huge uh, understanding of binomial distribution and should need a lot more of my help. See you next time.